It's, it's a joy to realize that God's working on us, whether we are or not. <laughs> Isn't that good? Because he said that Jesus is the author and the finisher of the faith, and Paul spoke about how he is able to perfect that which I have committed unto him unto the day of salvation, meaning that we have committed our lives unto Jesus, so he is working in us and on us to bring us and present us before the Father with exceeding joy, that he will cause the circumstances of our life to work in our life to affect us in such a way that it directs us back to him in a simple way. So you see how cause and effect works? Is that God causes, or if you want to say allows, it is the same because without his permission, nothing that happens can occur. So God allows the circumstances of your life and he's planned them to cause an effect on you to direct you to him so he can work through you not you but he himself living in you that means a second party there not not just you saying oh it's god doing it and really it's you but he living in you causes you to go to him and then he works it out in other words he can change the circumstances just by you committing it unto him that way we aren't doing it and we have no reason to boast and if we're inside knowing this that sometimes the words of our mouth or the attitude or the action that we've done is obviously not us then it's so simple to let god be who he is which is the word emmanuel a fancy term a fancy word a fancy name for simply saying god with us but in Hebrew means more than that, which is God in us, which is what Jesus said when he was using the word and praying for the disciples in what we call the disciples prayer, that they may be one, or echad, which means one, that they may be one as you and I are one, Father, that where I am they may be and where you are they may be also, so that we would come into a oneness with God, that the only way for us to do that would be that Jesus be in us because we're still in this sinful flesh. So our spirit is growing, but as it does, it has someone that's there causing us to grow up with him and know him and to live inside of his protection that's within us. Now, you can't see your heartbeat unless you got an x-ray and you can't see the blood shooting through the veins unless you have a venal arterial scope or camera watching it. The same thing is true about how God is working in you and lives inside you, is that unless you have a spiritual scope, <laughs> unless you have the right tools, you can't see it. So you trust by faith the fact that a doctor reads your x-rays and does all those things. The same is true about how the Holy Spirit does that and applies it to you through his word and it becomes very clear that he is in you and he is accomplishing through you to you what he would do with you by the circumstances of your life now there can be a more intimate way and that is to hear what jesus would say today and so what we do is we ask him to give us ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart to receive what he would speak because for me, I have an empty chair just underneath the camera angle, and you can't see it, but for me, for me, what keeps me humble, what keeps me bright, is seeing Jesus there, just out of your sight. In my utmost, the discipline of difficulty. In the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. An average view of the Christian life is that it means deliverance from trouble. No, that's an average view. It is deliverance in trouble, which is very different. 
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, there shall no evil befall thee. No plague can come nigh the place where you are at one with God. If you are a child of God, there certainly will be troubles to meet. But Jesus says, do not be surprised when they come. In the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. There is nothing for you to fear. Men who, before they were saved, would scorn to talk about troubles, often become fusionless after being born again because they have the wrong idea of the saint. God does not give us overcoming lives. He gives us life as we overcome because we are the poor in spirit. The strain is the strength. If there is no strain, there is no strength. Are you asking God to give you life and liberty and joy? He cannot, unless you will accept the strain. Immediately when you face that trial and tribulation, that persevering through it and doing what God is asking you to do, the strain of it, you will get the strength from it. Overcome your own timidity and take the step and God will give you to eat of the tree of life and you will get nourishment. If you spend yourself out physically, you become exhausted, but spend yourself spiritually and you get more strength. God never gives strength for tomorrow or for the next hour, but only for the strain of the moment at the time of the need as he is doing in you by his strength what you cannot do for yourself in your own. The temptation is to face difficulties from a common sense standpoint. The saint is hilarious when he is crushed with difficulties because the thing is so, so absurd it is impossible to anyone but God. I can tell you <laughs> when they came and told me that I wouldn't live past 30, there was a time where I sat back. The first shock was a little shocking. But there was a time when I sat back and I thought, <laughs> and started cracking up. It was, it was funny because it was like, oh well. <laughs> and people hate when I say, oh well. But there have been so many times in my life that I've had to say, oh well, what do you do? You turn to God. What else? You know, you leave it in His hands. I faced death three times, you know, and I faced impossible circumstances so many times when I was in Jerusalem, so many times when I was in Mexico, so many times when I've been in my life that I should have died. I, I, being down to 80 pounds and laying in hospital beds for a year in a VA hospital and having IVs in my arms and having so many different circumstances in my life that, oh well, what do you do? I was reading my Bible. I was still the same person. I laughed at times. I cried at times. I suffered at times. And I almost died at times. But the reality is, is that that is what a Christian is. When it's impossible, it's God. So, oh well, deal with it. He'll take care of you. I love the impossible because that's what I live for. It's the everyday attitude adjustments and tweakings that God does every day with our circumstances that challenges me and you and admit it it's true that we don't always treat as god working in that little way but he works in the big way and the little way too because he's working on you and me too